the idea here is to get all of these golf balls curving to the left. So what we want to do is stack as many elements as possible to be able to increase the likelihood of that. Now, these setup pieces, right foot back, foot flared, knee flared, shoulder and hip back, handle forward and up, right arms under. If you've never done this before, that's a lot to do at one time, right? And I'm not saying you have to do all of these. Maybe you pick one or two. Maybe you do do all of them and just start with the setup. You really want to add only what you need to curve it to the left. But if you haven't been able to, you can do all of them. So we have our setup pieces here. Do one more with just this. So foot's back, knee, uh, toes flared, right shoulder, right hip back, hands are up and forward. Face is still square here at this point in time. And what I'm looking to see as I hit, and all of these so far is to get the ball curve left. Hey guys, Eric here outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about an automatic draw swing method. Really what to put in your swing, what drills to do and feels to use to start to draw all of your irons and driver relatively on command. Now, before we dive into that, I wanna talk quickly about kagornogolf.com. Now, we built kagornogolf.com to remove the barrier between you and I, so I could be your personal golf coach and really help take your game to your next level. It's where you can send me your swings, I can give you personalized feedback, build you a personal practice plan, tell you step by step what to do and how to practice to help break 100, break 90, break 80, fix your slice, whatever your goal is, we have solutions there. You get access to over 500 exclusive videos, all of our master classes, everything you need to take your game to the next level. We'll put the link to GrunoGolf.com in the description down below. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about the automatic draw swing. And really what I wanna talk about is what elements you can put in and how you can structure your golf swing to make sure you draw all of the golf balls. Now guys, before we dive in here too, if you guys can do us a favor, if you click that like button down below, make sure you comment on the video here after we're done and click the subscribe button. It really helps YouTube send our videos out so we can help more people and ultimately help make more videos for you guys to continue to watch. If you could do that for us, it really, really uh, helps us out. So in terms of the draw pattern, there's a couple things for us to discuss. And what I want you to imagine is you have this sort of chart on the screen or chart in front of you. And the left side of the chart says draw on it and the right side says fade or slice. And then you've got all the elements that a golf swing could have underneath each one of those in the chart. Basically what you're looking to do to try and draw the ball, or especially if you've been fading the ball forever and can't fix it, is put as many check marks in that draw column as possible. Now there's three main areas we wanna look as to uh, where those check marks will be. That'll be the setup position, the backswing position, and the downswing position. So let's start with the setup, couple pieces to keep in mind here. Now if I take my normal setup, and I'm gonna grab a secondary stick here to visualize a little alignment. So I've got the white stick on my target line. I'm gonna put a stick on the ground for my feet so you can see how we're gonna do this. Now, as a right-handed golfer, if I want to draw the ball, obviously that means the ball is going to uh, start out to the right and curve to the left some amount. A couple pieces I'm going to do, and I'm going to start with my trail foot or leg. I'd like to take my trail foot and pull it back away from the stick, and I also want to flare it out. And when I say flare it out, I mean my foot and my toes are both going to point to the right or away from the target. If this is 12 o'clock in front of me, I'm flaring them out towards one or two o'clock. So the foot is pulled back, the knee and the uh, foot are flared out to the right. The next piece is gonna be the trail hip or right hip and right shoulder. And so I got my foot back, foot flared. I want my right hip to be pulled back behind me and my right shoulder to be pulled back. That's gonna make my knees, hip, chest, shoulder be closed or a little bit to the right of the target. So set up positions if this were normal, Foot's pulled back, foot, toes, knee, flared out, hip, shoulder, back. Now as I do that, I'm also, as my right shoulder pulls back, I'm also gonna, you're gonna note from the down the line, my right arm is gonna be a little bit more bent and under, so you should be able to see my left forearm above my right arm. Now I've got my handle forward, just like normal, inside my left thigh. I could put the club face at some different positions, but let's say for the sake of now, I keep the club face about 
um, at my target line. If we start to overdraw it, we can uh, push that a little to the right, but let's assume that that's just normal. And then my handle here is gonna be forward and raised slightly. Forward and raised slightly. So these are my setup pieces. Let's just hit one or two uh, with just these before we talk anything else. And again, the, the idea here is to get all of these golf balls curving to the left. So what we want to do is stack as many elements as possible to be able to increase the likelihood of that. Now, these setup pieces, right foot back, foot flared, knee flared, shoulder and hip back, handle forward and up, right arms under. If you've never done this before, that's a lot to do at one time, right? And I'm not saying you have to do all of these. Maybe you pick one or two. Maybe you do do all of them and just start with the setup. You really want to add only what you need to curve it to the left. But if you haven't been able to, you can do all of them. So we have our setup pieces here. Do one more with just this. So foot's back, knee, uh, toes flared, right shoulder, right hip back, hands are up and forward. Face is still square here at this point in time. And what I'm looking to see as I hit, and all of these so far, is to get the ball curve left. In the beginning phases, I'm not really concerned with how much it curves left, where it starts, where it finishes. I just want to see it curve left. Let's do one more with the setup. Foot back, toes knee flared, right hip, right shoulder back, handle forward and up, right arm is soft and under. And all three of those balls had a nice draw to it. So now on to the backswing pieces, and there's a couple backswing pieces that we want to look at that can help. Same thing, two or three of them. Goal is to stack as many elements as possible. Don't have to do this all at once, but you can. Now during the backswing, what do I want to look at for the draw? Well, for me to hit the draw, the same thing as the setup, I want to make sure that there's two main components, right? My club is going to work to the ball from inside, so a path from inside to the right and I need to have my club face slightly closed to that path to get the ball to curve left. Face closed to path is the biggie. Now, what can we do during the backswing? We got a right foot back, toes knee flared, hip and shoulder back, handle forward and up, right arm soft and under. I'm telling you, just those setup pieces are gonna do it for a lot of you. But what I can do on the way back, here's a couple things. Number one is gonna be arm depth. So I wanna make sure during my backswing that my lead arm gets in and across my chest. I've got this stick on the ground at about four o'clock. There's some confusion uh, in the comments about the clock. 12 o'clock is towards the ball. Three o'clock is towards this camera. So that would be four o'clock, just, just inside of that. Unless I'm messing up the clock. I think that's right there, four o'clock. So when I go back, I wanna feel my lead arm work in and across or deeper. So for me, it, from my point of view, the left arm or lead arm is on the same angle as that club. It's inside of it, right? It's to the right of it from my point of view, and it's on the same angle. In simple terms, think the deeper you're able to get those arms, the more draw bias we're gonna get. So that would be part one. Now, as my arm's going in, I would like to allow my trail leg to extend and get my right hip turned behind me. So it's arms in, trail leg extends, hip behind me. So I got all my setup pieces in here still. Backswing, feeling arm in, trail leg straightening, hip up and back. And again, all of those, and you guys can't see these balls, but those are all drawing to the left, right, which is the objective. So those would be the main two to start with. Arm in, lead arm in, inside of that 45, right? Letting my right leg lengthen as my right hip turns behind me. My hip and shoulder turning behind me. Right foot's back, foot and knee flared, hip and shoulder back, hands are forward and up, arm in, leg extended on the way back, arm in, leg extended. Good, and again, all draw patterns. Now, if you're doing these and the ball's, let's just say, straight pushing to the right, which it may in the beginning, you need to do something to make your club face slightly more closed. And what I would say you should do from there to make that club face slightly more closed is that a little bit more bow or flex to your left wrist. So a little bit more curl under, like your logo's down towards the ground, a little more towards the camera. That will help with this. So right foot back, toes and knee out, hip and shoulder back, right arm soft, handles up and forward. I'm feeling my right leg extend, arm in, hip up and back. Again, I can add a little bit of left wrist bow there. 
Beautiful. And so same deal, again, all of those balls draw. Now, as you're working down and through, you know, really the point of this video for this automatic draw setup and, and backswing is, I think if you do those parts correctly, you shouldn't have to do a ton on the way through. If you've got these setup pieces correct, we got the backswing, lead arm in, trail leg extended, adding a little bit of left wrist bow. Now, as I come down, obviously I would like to have the arms and hands stay in. So it's arms back over the four, the clubs over the four and into the ball, but you shouldn't have to do a whole ton through impact if you get these correct. So let's do it again. From the beginning, right foot back, knee and toe flare to the right, hip and shoulder back, handle up and forward, right arm soft, arm in, leg extended hip back, keep the leg uh, arm in as I begin my downswing. Let's go ahead and do one more. And I'm adding a little left wrist bow as needed to get the ball curving left. So here's what I would recommend you do to start. Right, I'm hitting shots doing this, but that's pretty normal for me. If this is new for you and you've never done this, you can't do that all at one time. What I would do is kind of take this over a couple week progress uh, or process, and I would do just the setup. So week one, let's say you're gonna practice three times, get good at just the setup pieces, okay? So you can do that at one time. You can go foot back, feet out, knee out, hip and shoulder back, handle up and forward, arm under. Just here like this. And just start to hit little half shots to get a feel for what the setup feels like. Balls might be drawing from just that, right? That's week one. You're starting short and slow, hip high, hip high, make some three quarter swings, full swings. Week two, start to introduce the backswing pieces. Say, okay, these setup pieces are starting to feel more normal. I don't have to think as much about them. Now I'm feeling the arm in, leg back, little left wrist bow, right? And again, I'm gonna start short and build up. And I wanna see, hey, are all the balls curving to the left? Gradually, right, add that week two, week three. We can talk about keeping the lead arm in and adding some downswing pieces. I think that four o'clock stick is a really, really good reference point. And work these in. The goal, or how have you mastered this method, would be every single ball you hit curves left. I might have hit 10 balls there, every single one curved to left. Mary can touch it behind there. Every one curved left. Now, they all didn't curve the same amount. They all didn't land perfectly. Some of them curved more, curved less. That would be the secondary phase to this. You learn how to get all of them then started on the correct side, and then curving only the amount you want. But if you've been struggling hitting a draw forever, don't rush to that learn to curve them left, over curve them left, okay? Over curve them to the left. Don't rush out of that. If you guys need coaching beyond that, come to coronalgolf.com. We'll show you how to tighten that pattern up. But these are the pieces for the automatic draw. If you do this correctly, it will work, okay? If you're doing these and not drawing them, you need just more of these same pieces. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. As we mentioned before, if you guys could do us a favor, click that like button, put a comment down below with your thoughts on the video, maybe any videos you wanna see moving forward, click that subscribe button. It really helps send our videos to other golfers so we can continue making videos for you all to watch. If you guys did like this video and wanna see a similar YouTube style video, we'll put a card on the screen for that. If you'd love more coaching from me and the guys at CogornoGolf.com, we would love to work with you. We'll put the Cogorno Golf card on the screen as well. We'd love to see you there.